Good morning. Uh, my name's David, and um, I'm sitting under one of my apple trees in my garden. Uh, and I want to talk to you about the nature of the Holy Spirit this morning. And I want to speak out of um, a passage in Ezekiel 47, which is uh, an Old Testament um, passage. Ezekiel was a very colourful character, and um, there are some very profound pictures and images and, and visions in, in the book of Ezekiel. Um, now we know, don't we, that God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Three parts, uh, three characters if you like. One nature, very hard for us to grasp. <clears throat> but the, the nature of the Holy Spirit, the character of the Holy Spirit is very often misunderstood. And I wanna read bits out of the passage and speak to that this morning and encourage you. So, in my vision, says Ezekiel, the brand brought me back to the entrance of the temple. And there I saw a stream flowing from beneath the door of the temple. So that's flowing from the presence of God and passing uh, out of the gate. And the man brought me outside the wall and there I could see water flowing out through the side of the gateway. And the, the river, the stream here, that's flowing from the temple, from the presence of God, is uh, an image of the Holy Spirit. And this is a unique picture and description in, in Scripture. We don't see this kind of um, image anywhere else. It's a crucial passage. Um, So they journeyed down the stream. Measuring as he went, the man took me along the stream for 1,750 feet, and he led me across. So then the water was up to my ankles. So he went down the stream and then across the stream. And the water was up to Ezekiel's ankles. So Ezekiel could feel the tug the flow of the water on his ankles. Uh, you know, you can imagine the cool river water flowing across his feet. But he's completely in control because he's only in water up to his ankles. He measured off another 750 feet down the river bank and led me across again. But this time the water was up to my knees. Now, um, I trained as a mountain leader. And I can tell you that doing a river crossing it is a dangerous and difficult business in times of fast flow. When the water's up to your knees, it really tugs at you. Uh, you are not sure of your footing anymore and you start to think very carefully. So here's a picture of the river having grown in, in stature and in power. And suddenly it's something to take very seriously. And if I can draw a parallel, those of you who are parents or grandparents may relate to this. Um, those moments when you've got a, a toddler with their hand on your knee for support or, or looking up at you to get your attention. If you look in your heart at that moment, you'll find something very close to the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very close in those moments. Um, you can't move without great care and attention. Uh, you move with great sensitivity and with love uh, because you've got a child leaning on your, on your kneecap. After another 750 feet down the river, the water was up to my waist. And then he measured another 750 feet and the river was too deep to walk across. A river deep enough to swim in is one translation. So um, the waist was regarded as kind of the place of strength in those days. So why would you do that? Why would you cross into the river of the Holy Spirit so deeply that it's deep enough to swim in? So deep that you couldn't walk? And, and effectively the picture here is you no longer have control, you're being carried by the current. Why would you do that? 
Well, the answer is in the second part of the passage. He asked me, have you been watching, son of man? Then he led me back to the river bank. And then I when I returned, I was surprised by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. And I find so often the presence of the Holy Spirit brings surprise. It brings the unexpected. He brings the unexpected so often. It's almost his calling card. Um, he said, this river flows east through the desert into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of this stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. Fishermen will stand on the shores of the Dead Sea where there were no fishermen at the time and there still aren't. All the way along, the shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river and the leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. There will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every month for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food and the leaves for healing. So I wonder if you see this. It's absolutely bedrock in the nature of God to create life, to bring life, to bring fruitfulness. It's an essential part of his nature that cannot change. Um, astronomers have been talking about uh, finding uh, gases in, Ven in the atmosphere of Venus I wouldn't be at that, that suggests the presence of life. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there was life throughout the universe of one sort or another because God's creative presence always brings life. Um, and here we see that the fruit is, is there 12 months a year and the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Now this tree that I'm sitting under is, I don't know, 50 years old? I'm not sure. Um, I didn't plant it. And it's covered in apples. And if you think about it, the leaves and the apples take time. The, the water from the Holy Spirit goes up the trunk. And it's, it takes time before the sap uh, produces the leaves and the fruit. And that's a, a very precise picture of the nature of the Holy Spirit and how he works. He works through us and in us invisibly, but powerfully, fruitfully, and through seasons. He's always fruitful. He's always surprising. He's usually invisible. But we can see where he's been. And, and if we remember that God is a fruit inspector, most of the tests of the presence of God in scripture tests of prophetic words are to do with fruit. By your fruit you will know them, Jesus said. So I want to encourage you this morning to dwell on that passage, read that passage for yourself and spot the, the calling cards of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the tug on the knees. And I want to encourage you to step in to the river, walk down the bank of the river, journey with the Holy Spirit uh, where you have no control, where he's sweeping you away, where you're swimming but you don't know where you're going. And I want to encourage you to think about why you would do that because what he always does is he sows life, he creates life where there isn't life. I don't know why, it's in his nature. What he loves to do is take us into dead places, take us through dead places and bring life. It's, it's what he's like. It's what he loves to do. And he likes to have fun along the way as well. Ezekiel was surprised uh, all along the way. So um, I'm going to pray for us this morning. So Holy Spirit, we want to welcome you this morning into our day. We want to journey with you today. We want to enjoy your presence and we want to understand your nature better. The fact that you are always a bringer of life. That the, the result of your presence and of journeying with you over time is that the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. That 
you heal, you bring life. Lord, we, th we worship you for that. We thank you for that. And ask that you'd make us more familiar, help us to be more tuned in to who you are and to recognise your presence and to just swim in the current and not stop when it, the water's at our ankles, not resist the tug at our knees, but to um, get comfortable with that feeling of having the tug of the current and maybe that hand of the toddler on our knees and to swim with you into, into greater and better things. So Holy Spirit, would you bless us today? Would you bless us with your presence? Would you bless us with your fruitfulness? And would you sow fresh seed uh, that will turn into fruitful trees on the riverbank? And um, here's an apple from the tree. It's pretty good. Have a good day.